in the first part, we looked at quite basic examples. Now we raise the level. Hi. The last example was about how to treat only the sending part using a prefader send. While this works well, most of the time a normal send makes more sense. The advantage of prefader send you have the freedom to choose the exact point in the signal chain from where it shall send. The disadvantage channel volume and sending volume are not linked anymore. If you lower the volume of the channel, the sending signal stays at the volume you set before. This is mostly not what we want. One of the biggest reasons in general for using sends is to be able to use one instance of an effect for multiple other channels and because of that saving a lot of CPU. But the problem often resists. To avoid too much frequency overlapping, restricting the part going into a send effect can often be important. The challenge here is now that on one side we have prominent sounds of our song going into the same effect which we don't want to have restricted very much or perhaps even not at all. This is easy to do by adjusting the effect's own settings or for example put a filter behind to restrict it. On the other side we have a lot of filling elements, background sounds and layered stuff which are probably sent to the same effect but where it would make sense to restrict them much more to keep the mix clean and balanced. We have already seen how this is possible by using patcher for making prefader sense. But what about a normal postfader send? With normal sends, we cannot modify the send itself. We would, for example, have to filter the sound complete and that would affect both not only the sended signal but the dry part too. On the receiving channel, in its current state, every other change before and after the delay would affect the wet sound of all other channels routed to it. In most other doors, in this situation, you would have to use a second send channel. More tracks, more CPU usage. Not so in FL Studio. Replace the delay with patcher by holding shift when clicking on the patcher entry or when dragging it onto the FX slot. The delay is now patcherized but it still sounds the same. What did we learn before? Every connection to another channel sends 0 to 125% of the original signal to the main input of the receiving channel, but installs at the same moment a sidechain port where always 100% of the signal is present as well. Every channel connected to this delay got a separate input port in Patcher carrying 100% of the original channel's output. If you want to activate multiple entries from such a menu without having to open the menu over and over again, 
right-click the entries instead. This selects, but the menu stays open. This works in many places all over FL Studio where multiple choices can make sense. Let's take a look first at the rolling base. This baseline never plays in isolation, but always in combination with the sub bass, which already carries many of the lower frequency, and doubling them is never a good idea. For the echo though, I only want the top end of the rolling bass. I want to have just a little sparkle of it dancing around in the whole mix, adding even more movement. Now watch this. I turn the existing send to zero, as I don't want to have any signal of the bass going into the main input of the channel. I activate the separate input instead. Let's grab an EQ and put it into patcher. I want to filter the bass, so we drag a cable from the bass node to the EQ and make our settings, a high pass filter in this case. We want to use the same delay instance for our bass too, so let's route our filtered bass signal to the delay. Hovering over one of the little arrows, we get a volume control, which can overtake the functionality of a sand knob. So let's do it. Taking a second example with the open hi-hat. I like ping pong delays on the open hi-hat to create a bit of a groove, as it often plays without the closed ones too. I do like the open hi-hat sound, but I don't like how the delayed signal sound. That's too much. Again, I just want to have the sparkle dancing around. Same steps. Turn down the volume of the send to zero. Activate the separate input. Put in a high pass filter. Connect everything and adjust the send amount. Much better. This method can be expanded even further. You are of course not limited to just one sand effect. You could do multiple send effects on the same track. If your CPU allows one track hitting a bit harder, well, when using FS Studio natives it's a bit extreme as they don't take much CPU. You could do basically all of your sends in a single mixer track instead of repeating this whole procedure on every single send channel needed. Enjoy your modified sense with Sense Channels 2.0. Thank you for watching.